Lord Sugar Charlie, here is your airways clearance. You are cleared to gander by Chertsey, Woodley, Compton, and Green One. I've been mixed up with flying all my life. Flown everything from moths to connies. Now, as control officer, I fly them from the ground. I thought the kick was going out of life when the changeover came. But I was wrong. An airport's still the most exciting place in the world. Well, for me, anyway. Every minute, night and day, we handle the big planes in and out. She's a Stratocruiser, Pan American, just in from the States. It's right here in the tower that the life of the airport is planned. And when I say life, I mean life. <laughs> and I thought it was going to be a dull routine job. The giant planes stream in from all parts of the world, India, Africa, America, Europe. And it's our job to sort them out, bring them down, and fly them off again. It doesn't give you much time to sit and dream. I've flown thousands of passengers all over the world in my time, so they're just routine nowadays. But air cargoes, now there's a new angle. In the early days, we didn't have room for freight. But today, anything and almost everything goes by air. Here's an idea I spotted on a trans-world constellation loading for New York. They wheeled up something that looked like a lifeboat, called a speed pack. It's already loaded with cargo. They just hitch her on and she winds up snug under the belly, and there she rides right across the ocean. The speed pack was loaded with one of the queerest cargoes I've come across, sea moss. So I took the trouble to find out more about it. Just about the time when most people are thinking about getting out of bed, these tiny craft are on their way out of port looking for sea moss, Neptune's fern. The only way to find the beds is to look for yourself in a frogman's outfit. The Thames Estuary, where fresh water meets salty, is the only place in the world where this moss grows in quantity. But this is no ordinary fishing. Now they sling over a sort of hay rake called a drudger and scrape the seabed. That's all there is to it. Nice, easy sort of job. You'd think, but just look at that roll. Just about the end of the sweep now. Time to pull up the drudger and see how they're making out. Of course, they'll go up and down till they've cleaned out the whole area. Well, up it comes and there's our catch. Sea moss, Neptune's fern. And fern is just what they use it for in America. They have none over there and we'll take all we can give them. They use it for decoration and for a background to fresh cut blooms. This treasure trove from the estuary means dollars for us and the secret is that it never withers. The moss is carefully washed, dried and colored and that's about all that it needs doing to it because it goes on living. It continues to live whilst it's being packed into the speed pack bound for America, slung underneath the big constellation, now on our way across the Atlantic. 20th century sky trader linking London and New York the service of beauty. Cargoes from the sea to cargoes for the land. Special Bristol freighters are loading new cars for the continent. These are bound for Paris. Crossing the channel, we look for Le Touquet, which is right on the coast anyway. And here we are in France with hardly time for a nap on the way. be simpler, huh? There's nothing to it, so long as your papers are in order. In a matter of minutes, we're heading for Paris, and that, as far as I'm concerned, is a good idea at any time.
through long avenues of popular and quiet towns, though they shiny, streamlined automobiles. And so to Paris. The Arc de Triomphe. And the rest. Not that I ever got much rest in Paris, anyway. Back in Latouque, the Bristol is making her final flight as the day draws to a close. And in the cities, the lights are beginning to signal the start of nightlife. One of the brightest night spots on the continent is Brussels. And I give you that information as an expert on the subject, but uh, it's a through trip this time. So as the dawn begins to break, we're on our way to take a look at the world's most unique air service. A tunnel may seem a funny place to look for an air service, but that's where it begins as we ride up with the cargo from the bonded vaults. Melsbrook, Brussels Airport. And the cargo train is bringing a load of mail for the world's only full-time helicopter mail service. It's run by Sabina, who use Bell helicopters. I never got around to flying one of these babies, but there she goes, rising nobly to the occasion. <laughs> Sorry, but what do you expect with one of those things buzzing around like a runaway fan? Maybe I'm old-fashioned, but I certainly like some good solid wings when I fly. After the routine test flight, the clip-on panniers are fed, mail loaded, and she's off on her way to the capital. right into the very center of Brussels itself. The incoming mail is offloaded, and at the same time, the outgoing mail is loaded, ready for delivery at the next town. The basis of air cargo service is that delicate and difficult freight can be handled with speed and safety. This is just such a cargo. Sodium-2-4, straight from the atomic research establishment at Harwell. A hurry order for South Africa. This innocent looking container holds radioactive sodium chloride. A strange cargo and one that must be treated with the greatest respect. When removed from its lead protection by the use of the special rod, these isotopes admit rays of a dangerous nature and human contact with this unseen power must be strictly limited. It was only possible for the cameraman to obtain these pictures by the use of a telephoto lens. These rays fog motion picture film at a distance up to 10 feet. Its value decaying by half every 15 hours, transport by air is essential. If these byproducts of the atomic pile are to play their part in medical research. They're stored for flight in special insulated containers in the very wingtips of the South African plane. So with speed, precision, and complete safety, a very delicate and precious cargo was on its way to further medical knowledge in Johannesburg. From South to North Africa, we hurry now. Typhoid in the old Eighth Army's battleground a threat to the Middle East, 
Only one drug can cope with it, and from Benghazi the call goes to London, to a laboratory where a new wonder drug is manufactured. Need chloromycetin at once, and in quantity. The manager passes the order and labels it rush. Chloromycetin, the latest antibiotic, is the first of its kind ever to be made from start to finish by man. And this laboratory was specially built to make it. Specially built as some of the solvents used in the process are highly inflammable. Swirling in the vat, it looks very ordinary. But this is the only sure hope of countless thousands. Science puts another miracle drug in the service of man, and the genius of our manufacturers steps up production to meet the demand. But the chloromycetin must get there in time. Every hour counts if the epidemic is to be checked, and air freight is the only answer. We have an Elizabethan waiting, ready to take off as soon as the drug is loaded. Delivery in one day instead of maybe a week. That's the lot. Didn't waste much time. And as I give her takeoff clearance, I wish her Godspeed with her priceless cargo. Yes, there's plenty of drama at an airport, but there's also fun. For instance, every Monday and Friday, a special BOAC freighter comes in from Africa and the Far East. We call her the Ark because she is the animal's special. Once the doors are opened, it's sheer pandemonium as everything starts to yell at once. We're very fond of this flight at the airport and generally try to be around when she comes in. First come the monkeys. Thousands of these are flowing every year, and every one of them seems to look and smell the same to me. Then birds of all shapes, sizes, and colors. Sea lions need special attention. They have to be sprayed frequently while traveling to keep them cool. Tiger cubs are always popular. We often get them from India and the Far East. Somebody thought he'd be pretty smart and give the cameraman a close-up of this tiger cub. But he didn't seem to want to cooperate. No, not a bit. Then they brought his girlfriend out and he fell for it, the sucker. After the star performers comes the heavy stuff. BOAC fly more animals than any other airline in the world. And for many of them, Britain is just an overnight stop. So, BOAC organized an animal's hotel at Meadowbank, where the guests can relax before the next hop. These leopard cubs soon made themselves at home. Someone once told me that leopards think flying is the best way to uh, change spots. Now, here's a baby honey bear, just a bundle of fun and claws. Nosing around nearby is a taper. He tried to grow a trunk, but found his meat ration wasn't big enough. 
I suppose this is one way to relax, especially if you happen to be a gibbon. Most of these animals love flying and the attention they receive whilst they're on the way to distant parts. When drama comes to the tower. When the phone rings, it can be anything. This turned out to be an emergency call from a doctor. Have you an air ambulance available at once for a hospital case? We hadn't, but we switched the call to Lancashire Aircraft. They promised immediate action and the doctor returned to the patient, a boy who had lost his grip while climbing and had fallen. Chief Pilot John Mallard decided to take the consul on Operation Mercy himself. Landing on a rough island field might be a tricky job and taking off perhaps worse. I knew Johnny in the war couldn't have a better guy in any time of trouble. If it was possible, he'd do it. If it wasn't, he'd have a darn good try anyway. Meantime on the island, they'd strapped the kid in a rescue stretcher and were carrying him across the dunes. It wasn't all that far to the island, and as Johnny made his approach bank, the kid was on his way to the meeting place. surface doesn't look so good. They both arrived at about the same time. The doc didn't like the look of the boy at all. He'd injured his head badly on some rocks as he fell, and there was the risk of tetanus with no hospital except across the water. However, it didn't take long to transfer him to the consul. to get the kite off the deck without much trouble. Back at the airport, they were standing by to move at the first signal. Every second counted. The smoother the flight, the better. As the ambulance crossed the coast, Johnny asked for emergency landing facilities in two minutes, which were granted at once. The kid was in bad shape back there, but he'd had a good crossing, and it wouldn't be long now. The consul had started its run in. I guess a few people heaved a sigh of relief as the ambulance touched down. From now on, it was up to the experts, and as the consul reached the apron, they took over. They rushed the boy to hospital. Everything had been laid on to give the kid every chance. As soon as he arrived, he'd be rushed to the operating theater where the surgeon was even now waiting. In the theater, he was put under gas right away for examination and treatment. It seems they were just in time, thanks to the air ambulance. It was touch and go, but I heard later that everything was going to be okay. For Johnny, it was just another freight job. Only this time, his cargo was life. I wonder how he felt about it. Pretty good, I expect. And so it goes. Emergency or no emergency, life at an airport never stands still. Day and night, the sky traders load their cargoes. Now, more than ever, time means money in the markets of the world. Back to work.
Good luck, happy landings to all the 20th century tramps of the air. The Sky Traders. George Sugar Charlie, here is your airways clearance. You are cleared to gander by Chertsey, Woodley, Compton, and Green One. Over.